Good morning. Here we are. We are back again for day number two. I am Craig Laird. If you never uh, tuned in yesterday, maybe you never got a chance, you have not had a chance to catch up yet, then I am Craig Laird. And this is our very first show. Well, it's not actually. It's our, se it's our first week. It's our second show of Wake Up Call with Craig. I'm going to be here every day, Monday to Friday, 9am for a full hour. It's going to be me just on my Todd, but we're going to have guests just popping in and out as well. So that's going to be 9am here in the UK. If you are going to be uh, watching from the US of A, then that is going to be 4am Eastern time, 1am Pacific time. Now I'm saying that like as though I'm quite shocked. It was the amount of you that actually stayed up or got up to watch. It was an absolute pleasure. Yesterday, to kickstart the very, very first show, we kickstarted with my mum. My mum Skyped in, so we had a wee bit of a chat. She showed me some of the things that I, I had been making over the years. A little bit of soft crafts, maybe a bit of a tease as to what's coming up. Sarah even popped in as well. So she went over how, why she likes to do a run-in, what she does in her spare time. She'd done a bit of bacon with little Charlie as well. She brought in some marshmallows, which did not last long, trust me. And then, you know, we couldn't have a first show as well without having Ben. Ben Skyped in. Now, what, what happened really towards the end, you know, we've got Adam, who is just incredible with the tech. But unfortunately, we had this little bit of a problem right to the end, just as Ben was asking me just a few questions, like mass problems or that and it just, just so happened, just cut out. So I actually couldn't uh, interact with them at that point. You know, shame, but you know, these things happen. Uh, but Ben was just going over just about, you know, like his home uh, homeschooling that he's doing with the kids. But that was yesterday. We're now on to today's show. So we have got some shows that are coming up later on today, kickstarting with uh, Craffle. We've got Softer Side, and then we've even got Launch Party as well going to be jam-packed. Also, within the show as well, I'm going to be uh, joined with two of my friends as well, kind of alluded to something that I said a moment ago when it comes to soft crafts, but we've got later on, you know, we had Ben yesterday, you know, we had to have, we had to have Joe today, you know, and it's no, uh, it's no secret because, uh, well, we kind of kind of told you all yesterday, didn't we, that Joe was going to be coming in. What we're going to be doing is uh, showing you something first off that's coming up onto our uh, craft vault. Now, some of you, you may think, mm, Craig, Christmas, really? If you don't know me, you soon will know how much I love Christmas. Love it so much. So uh, having the second show, I was like, we've got to have something Christmas themed. And that's exactly what we have got. So these are coming up in Craft Fall in, uh, well, just a couple of hours time. These are our Christmas sets. These are our cut and emboss folders. And this is something that we're actually going to be demonstrating in a moment. So with that being Craft Fall, that's the very first Craft Fall of the day, which is going to be 11 a.m. here in the UK. So will we have a look, see, actually, do you know what? Do you know what? Let's, uh, uh, no, I don't want to learn more, Mr. iPad tablet thing. Let's have a look and see. Uh, no, honestly, I don't want to learn more. Not now. Right, let's properly have a, now we've got Siri going, no Siri, no, there we go. Right, there we go. I think we're all right. All right, we're good. I, th I think we're all right. I don't think we need uh, any tech. We've got, uh, Aaron, we've got uh, Liam in the gallery today. I think we're all right at the moment. I kind of know tech to a certain level. But we've got Christine from upstate New York. Gosh, that's going to be about 4 a.m., is it not? Just after 4 a.m. Melody from Colorado is set saying uh, good morning. Elizabeth from uh, Illinois. We've got Sarah from Melbourne, Australia, which if I'm thinking correctly, that's actually tomorrow. So whatever you do, please, uh, Sarah, don't tell me what's actually wait happening in the next 24 hours because I don't want to know. I want to be kept a surprise. Uh, Katrina from Northampton here in the UK. Astrid saying uh, good morning to everyone. Good morning to you too. And then we've got uh, Elizabeth from Peterborough, which I'll actually be down in uh, your neck of the woods in a couple of weeks' time with some Crafters Companion goodies. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, preview something that's coming up in uh, Craft Vault. So let me, actually, I'm going to take... Bear with, bear with. Black tea, not too weak, not too weak, not too strong. I like it weak. One and a half sugars. Just in case, you know, you never know. We might need someone to pop in at any point. Because uh, we're Monday to Friday, we might need some people just to pop in with uh, an extra cup of tea every now and again. So just kind of putting them on guard so that they know. What we're going to do to start with is let's bring in our cut and emboss folders. You can see them on your screen right now. You're getting all of them, all four of them here with the... Uh, no way. 
Do you know something? I've just been told that and I actually didn't know that. So yesterday we had a specific offer on Craft Vault. Today on Craft Vault, which is uh, 11 a.m. here in the UK and then uh, later on 7 p.m. here in, uh, in the UK as well. We'll go over the USA Times just shortly. Everything is half off. Half price, everything, 50% off. So even there's so many different uh, configurations you can think of, like when it comes to these Boston folders, you could be thinking that it's kind of like, you know, buy two, you get two free, all these different things. But it's basically, the bundle is half price. Not only are these embossed folders, but these are cut and embossed folders, where these cut as well. They're Christmas themed, you're getting four within each one. You're going to see how you get Faith, 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 Faith Holly, you get Peace, and then you get rejoice as well. All these words die cut out. We're going to be showing you Holly in a moment. And then what you can do is these die cut pieces that pop out, you can then use them elsewhere if you want to. So many different things that you could do. So I thought what we can do is we'll bring in one of our ink pads. We're going to use one of our water reactive ink pads. This is what we're going to do in what's called a letter pressing technique. So I'm going to bring my folder in. So I'm going to go for the Holly. Now within the Holly, I'm going to also bring in a little bit of cardstock. This is just white smooth stamping card that I'm using. Now all these silver letters, so we've got the H, the L, the L and the Y, that actually die cuts out. This black area, this actually embosses. So what we can do is bring in our Gemini Junior plates. Of course you can be using your large Gemini and if you do have a Gemini Mini um, or a Gemini Midi even, you could be using that as well. So for these ones, what I need is I need my two cotton plates from my Gemini. So that's what I've got here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open back up my folder and then I'm going to bring my ink pad. So if I find it, here we go, I've popped it to the side. Now what you'll find within the cotton embossed folders here, we've got the letters that you can see like I showed you in reverse, but this is kind of a very light sponge. Now you might think that you need to pick that out. Don't pick that out, that's there to protect your embossing folder on this side. You will get this very light die cut area, but it's not going to affect your embossing. So what we'll do is over this area here, I'm going to use grasshopper with this because it's holly, but then what I'll show you in a minute, a bit of matting and layer and we're going to add the red as well. So if we add the red into place here and then I'm going to take my green ink pad and I'm, all that I'm going to do is just lightly press. Now I am going to be covering this uh, lighter area here, kind of bit with the sponge, but what I'm going to do, I'm not overly concerned because what will happen is although we get the ink on there, it's not going to affect any future embossing or cutting as we go on. Dabbing that all the way around, even into these bits here where there's no embossing, there's no ink, I'm still going to add our ink into place. It's going to give us that more natural kind of look when it comes to our letterpress technique. So once I'm happy that I've got a fair coverage over the actual embossing folder, bringing in our cardstock. Once again, this is our uh, white smooth cardstock, but you can of course use any that you've got at home. And I'm just going to close that one over, bringing in my plates once again. So you can use your base cutting plate and then your top cutting plate. But what I like to do, just to enhance that embossing that wee bit more, I'm going to bring in my metal plate and I'm going to pop that one in. And this is just going to add just a couple of millimetres depth when it goes through the Gemini. And then what happens then, those embossed areas, the black areas, that's really going to make them stand out because we've popped the ink into place, it's going to push that ink into all those little embossed areas. So what I'm going to do is if we remove this one, and then if I peel this out of the way, so you can see we have got these letters that die cut out. Now, of course, you'll be saying, yeah, but Craig, you don't get the, the O, because what happens is the little holly bell here, that is then embossed through. So what happens if we come closer up, I'm going to bring this back in. Because we've gone over that backdrop with the ink, that full backdrop has gone all inky. Now you can go in with uh, more inks if you want. You can go uh, a lot deeper, a lot lighter if you want. This is to give you an idea. But see all this white area here? So we've got the swirls, we've got the scrolls, we've got the dots, we've got the holly, even into the middle here. That's all nice, crisp, clean white 
because we've not got any ink into place. So what we can do is let's move these ones out of the way for the time being. Now, I don't know if you did manage to catch uh, yesterday's show. The one thing I didn't kind of plan out is the fact of because I'm here on my own for most of the show, although we have a couple of guests popping in, you know, I have to keep this area tidy and clean because I'm going to come back and be using this bit again. If you did see last night's show with myself and Joe, let's just say, well, I think kind of tiredness had set in. And uh, we, I'm, I'm all right, I didn't get into trouble for the, the inky table. If you don't know what I'm on about, then you might want to tune back in into uh, Monday Makers yesterday. You'll find that on our website, but also on our uh, YouTube. Bring this back in. I'm going to bring in my guillotine. I've already done a few bits of matte and layer. So I've brought in some mats and layers with my red as well as my black. This is our 12 by 12 cardstock. So at the moment, as a guide, I'm going to cut, I'm just going to use my guillotine and cut away this excess white area. I'm going to work my way around and then I'm going to bring this into place and I'm just cutting down all the way down, all the way around each side. And I'm going to bring this one in and if I pop this over into place so you can see where the holly at the start of the words is starting to just pop through you can see just here and then simply I'm going to move that one out the way you can come along add embellishments ribbons bows anything you like what I'm going to do with the uh, red layer we're going to go all the way around with our tape runner I'm going to pop it onto my black cardstock. So just in case you wonder, my red layer is five and a quarter by seven and three quarters. My black layer is just a quarter of an inch bigger. That's then going to go onto our red card blank. Simply going all the way around. You can use whichever adhesive you want. It's all across on our website. So you can always check it out going across on uh, crafterscompanion.co.uk. Of course, if you're in the States, it's uh, dot com and then Europe U R E U. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of height just with some foam pads onto the back here. You can then do so many different things when it comes to the base. We're going to bring in our pads into here and then something is very simple and really, really quick. You can then come along and then just add, as I say, your gems or your pearls. This is when we're going to then uh, bring in a few bits and pieces. So you can see how that looks. And then if I then bring another one with holly, this goes to show how we can go even further when it comes to that. See all these different things you can do. Let's just very quickly show you once more. We've got from the Rejoice. Look at that. So you can keep it as very, very simple or you can go all out. It's entirely up to yourself. Now, I've just spotted out the corner of my eye, my, uh, my first guest for today. And uh, it's not something you always see me doing quite a lot. So I'm kind of looking forward to this, a bit nervous, but I know we've got Bernie coming in. Hiya, Bernie. How you doing? Just hey, you doing okay? I'm doing really Good, bad. good, good. Now, I've not seen your little loved one for quite a wee while, eh, Pippa? Gorgeous not, black lab. She's not so little anymore, Craig. <laughs> she's not? I, oh, I could imagine, I suppose. I could imagine that she's not little at all. She is a real chunky monkey now. She really is. She'll be 19 months now. Have I worked that out? Yeah, 19 months. So I've got some photos I've, I've brought in. So I've got the one of her when she was a little puppy, which was on the first day when I got her. Right. Which was... It'll have been August last year, so she was only a little tot then, and I think she oh, weighed about look. six or seven kilos. Look at her there, and she cute. That didn't last long because she soon started growing, and then she likes to sleep with the tongue out. Oh. I think I, I think I must have worn her out that day. That must have been after maybe a long first long walk, and then she was at the groomers just before Christmas. Now she hit, she doesn't let me put anything on her, but my groomer Alison has managed to get it dressed up. You can see her ears are down there. She doesn't look very happy at all, does she? Yeah. Oh, bless her. And this is a here, Craig, with her best bud. So that's Pippa on the left. Oh, and on the right, that's Molly. Oh, but that's Molly. She hasn't seen her since um, when we were out of lockdown last year. Right, OK. So she hasn't seen her for a while. But that's yep. her best board Molly so they they like to play together oh. and I'll say to her I'll be in the living room and say where's Molly where's Molly so I'll get wrong for teasing her off my mum 
because oh, she does look. get really, really, really excited. So, so cute. <laughs> what I'm going to do is if I can just kind of get you just a wee bit more. There we go. I think we're there. I know it's all the, it's all these different, you know, the, the guides and that in the, in the floor. But you know what we've got there? We've got there in the end, haven't we? Um, you're going to be up on soft crafts later on. But before that, you know, I've heard, I've heard, because yesterday we had Ben, he's yes. got a bit of a musical side. I've heard that you've also got a bit of a musical side as well. Well, I was watching yesterday, right? And I did enjoy the show. I've got a couple of things to mention as well later on that I caught your mum showing something that you've been making. So we'll come on to that. What to make it better? We'll to make to it better? <laughs> make it better? You mean? Let's base it, basically. But yeah, so when I was at school, I used to play the recorder. Right. And I absolutely loved it. And we used to go um, to Darling, which for those who um, don't live local to here. It's probably about six miles from here. Okay. And then down to Saltburn as well, down on the coast. And we used to go to like little music festivals. Right, okay. And I used to love it. And then <gasps> when I left school, I did buy one. Right. And I had a little bit of a play and I don't know, I don't know where it went, but I would love to have another go. The other thing I love is karaoke. So when we can go to start doesn't... going out and socializing again, if there's a karaoke on, you're there. I, I won't, I won't Absolutely. be, off. I won't be Absolutely. off the mic. I'll just have the mic constantly because I love singing. You love singing. Sing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you love singing. You, although, you know, you do get your karaoke machines. You know, you could just have one in the house and just sing away. You know, pop it onto your social media. That would be good. I'd love to see all that. I've, actually, love to see. I've actually got one at home, but I don't know where my microphone is. But <gasps> I do have a karaoke machine. There we go. <laughs> Amazon, eBay, anything like that. You know, you can get a new mic. Maybe see about getting you one. That would be good. Um, but then what I also found out last night for the first Ooh. time is you were a bit of a celebrity as well. Was it 1973? I know. I don't look that old, Craig. You don't. That's why I was totally shocked. That's why I was Totally shocked. Yeah, so I was born 1st of January. I was a New Year's baby, 1973. And in the local hospital where, where I was born, it was the first time that they switched over to um, weighing babies in metric right. rather than imperial. So I was the first baby that, I was, that was ever weighed in that hospital in metric. And then we got me and my mum. So my mum was in the hospital bed and she had me in her arms like this, cradles okay. in her arms. And we got our paper in the, uh, photo in the local paper and I have tried to find it, but I can't find it. Cause that would be fab, wouldn't it? If I could find it. So yeah, so that was my little, Little claim the to little fame. The little claim to fame. Yeah, ah. all them years ago. No, no, because when, <laughs> when they said you were a bit of a celebrity, I was like, well, you know, I, I hadn't heard that. But of course, you know, starting then, and then obviously now you're our soft, soft, uh, soft craft queen when it comes to Crafter's <laughs> Companion and everything. You even got me to, uh, to buy it. I keep calling it the button maker. It is like a button maker. It's a the popper. Snap the snap faster. Yes. You know these like snap fasteners you got? Oh my gosh, I was absolutely blown away with that. I had to go and buy it. I'm kind of snap fastening anything. It's great for like face masks because you can just yes, clip them onto the side and everything Liam, like that. Liam Such a great one. It was Liam, yeah. Jeans. Liam done it, Liam. Well man. done, Liam. Liam's mm -hmm. an hour here today. He does indeed, <laughs> yes. Which then I went and got one because it was so, so good. I brought it in today actually. Did you? Because one of the ladies in the office is wanting something snap fastening See, on the bag, so I said, I'm in Tuesday, mm -hmm. I'll bring the snap fastener. See, us so, on the cards, you know, we get asked to make cards, we get asked <laughs> to do soft crafts. But the reason, obviously, you know, you're so kind to actually come in is because you're in with soft crafts later on. You yes. know, I say soft crafts, you know, softer side at 1 pm. It's here in the UK. If you are watching uh, in the US, it's, it's 8, is it 8 am? Uh, you know, uh, one of these days, yeah, at 8 a.m. or it's going to be 5 a.m. Pacific time. Usually I'm quite good as well, but you know, when it's that wee bit of pressure, you know, you try to think of the times, but we got there. Um, so you're on with Joe, um, okay. and what you're going to be showing is actually something I'm away to go and nip across in a minute and do as well, am I? Yeah. 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 Now, I, I don't know what it is. I have an idea because I've seen it <laughs> laid out, but what we can do is if you can show us what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to carefully just walk across to the other side <laughs> and uh, I'll get myself sorted as well. I'm going That's to do that? Yeah. Right, yo. I'll, Whoa, no pressure. Pile, yeah, take that a mine. little pile of uh, stuff and okay. then we'll, uh, we'll get cut in. Brilliant. Right, yo. <laughs> if you can go over that, then that would be great. Yeah. Perfect. Brilliant. Right. So yes, so I'm back at one o'clock, but I thought when Craig invited me in to wake up with Craig this morning, how lucky am I, wake up with Craig on a Tuesday, I thought, why not? And I thought this is a great, a great set that we've got on our show later on to actually run Craig through today, because obviously Craig's such a brilliant paper crafter and I know he's so keen to get into sewing. So I will get him to make that cushion one day. You watch, you watch, we'll get him to make it. But I thought I'll run through what we've got here. So what we've got here is, this is our um, Threaders fabric cutter. 
So what this is basically is a, a ruler, acrylic ruler, and a cutter at the same time. If I lay it flat, you can actually see how we get the detail on here. So it's made up of a grid system. We've got the grid system here, and then in here is actually a rotary blade. Now, I know you'll be able to see this on the overhead. If I hold that there, now when I press this down, you can see the blade just protrudes past the end there. So you're not going to actually cut yourself. If you haven't pressed that down, your hand's gone there. It's, you're not going to have an issue with it at all. The other thing with it as well is, if you're scared of a rotary cutter, which a lot of people are, what happens with this is, that blade is always going to be housed in there. So whenever you're pressing down and moving it, it's not going to go anywhere else because the stoppers at either end to help you do it. So this is going to help us cut all of our fabric and different types of fabric. Actually, the grid's in inches. But Craig will be pleased to hear that there's also centimetres on here. So if you are a paper crafter, you can actually use this for your paper crafting as well because you've got both those measurements on. So now, shall we see if Craig's ready for to cut a little bit of fabric? Well, we'll do it, will we? Oh, Although, can it? I just say as well, I actually go in inches as well. Do you know that? Do you work yeah, in inches I, as well? Yeah, ah, I well, do. there you go. Yep. See, that's, that's my, my bad that I was thinking that paper crafting was all in, um, worked in centimetres. Some do, but I think you'd be surprised at actually how many actually uh, work in inches. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. we do. So, are you ready, Craig? I'm, so you've I'm got ready. Your mat, okay, yeah, got, and then got you've it. Got your cutter. So, you always need, a, and this is a self healing cutting mat. Okay. So, this is always always needed whenever you're cutting anything with a rotary cutter so right. whether it's a manual one or or this one okay so on your first little pile craig you've got a piece of fabric fab so what i'm going to ask you to do is to fold it over okay just so you've got it in in a fold there and then you're going to place it under your mat now are you left-handed or right-handed uh right-handed i always Excellent. have to think about that so you're going to have your blade over on the right hand side okay i'm left-handed so i would turn it round but just so you can keep up with me i'm going to do it right-handed oh, as well you're too kind. and it just shows actually how easy it is so you're going to lay your fabric on the mat okay and we're just going to trim the end just to neaten it up before we start doing any cutting so what you're going to do is you're going to place your fabric fold towards you fold towards me yep yep and then any of those grid lines that are on the um, cutter just line them up with the folds because we know that fold is straight yeah and then just have maybe about half an inch ish or something or a quarter of an inch just off the end that we're going to cut off so i'm ignoring the the lines on the the mat i'm following the lines yes on the, so right. use use the cutter got yeah. yeah the mat's just there to stop us cutting you can actually line up on the mat as well but when you're using this it's it's better to use the actual cutter itself okay okay so then what you're going to do you're going to then put your hand on here and you're going to press it now when you haven't used one of these before you're not sure how much pressure to, to do so just try it and if it doesn't cut then you know next time you need to apply a little bit more pressure and all you're going to do is press put your hand flat on it press okay. it and as you press in just guide it up the track okay there we go. Yep. Let's see okay. how you how did I've, that I've, work? Did I think it I've work? Done did it cut? That one. Oh, I think I've I've got most of it. There's just a couple. Is it threads? So a couple of little threads. So yeah. yeah. So you, so bring it back towards you. Right. I okay. prefer to cut away, and then just give it another press. Okay. Doc. A little bit more pressure. And it, when you're first learning it, that's what you, you need to do is just get that pressure right. So you don't want to go in gung ho and yeah. really press it. If you press it how you think, and then you know that you might need a little bit. So it's a bit as, you know, when you're driving along in the car and you're getting to 30 miles an hour, but you're only at 27, so you know you need to press just a little bit more just to get that, that speed up. I see what up. you mean, yeah. Does that, that I, know, I know what sense? you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Also, I think what I was doing is I wasn't actually pressing flat. I had it at a bit of an angle. I ah, wasn't right. flat, so it was actually sitting at a bit of an angle. So I think that's what I was doing. But I've got it. I've yeah. got it. It's cut. Great, right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to cut a strip of fabric. So if you, I lift my mat up like that, and okay. if you just turn your fabric around, 
And you can move your mat a little bit over to the left. So you've got a bit of the fabric on the mat. Uh, you cut it to the left, sorry. And what we're going to do, we're going to cut a strip that's four inches wide. So that edge that you trimmed before, that's now under your grid. Got you, yeah. So you're going to line that up with the four inch line. Is that what these circle numbers are? Yes. Yeah, okay. So you've got the one down the middle, and then you've got the one at the top and the one at the bottom. So wherever you look, yeah. you can see the four. So just line up so we know that edge is perfectly straight because that's the one we've just cut. Yep. So you're going to line that up there. Now you can cut towards you, but I tend to, by habit, I tend to cut away from me because with the rotary cutter, the, the handheld ones, you would always cut away from yourself. Yeah. So I tend to just guide that back down towards me and then again and put if you feel that the any of it's moving put your left hand like splayed so yeah. rather than it be flat have it splayed with your fingers please ignore my inky fingers though <laughs> i am a, right. I am a paper crafter, right. so and then you're just going to go and glide like that okay brilliant i'm just going to hang fire a second so you can watch what i'm going to do here we go so if i go so i'm just pressing down and then let's oh look at that oh it's done it brilliant done it. look at it okay there we go there we go we've got now foot so that piece that you've cut off you can discard that now this bit that i've just cut off the the bit that's to oh. the right of the um cutter yeah the bigger that piece to the side okay and we're interested in this little bit here right so what we're going to do we're going to open this up because we've got a nice long strip now how how would you fancy making it into a hexagon I'm, I'm up for the challenge. You're for, you can do I am, it. You I, can I might do just it. need a, a wee bit of a copy, but yeah. I, I love I love doing this one because I love making Because you can make, you, so with this, you can make your strips, your squares, your rectangles, but you can also make your triangles. You can make the dual shape and you can also make hexagons, which is my favourite shape um, in, in quilting and patchwork. Yeah. I love it. Right, so the other thing on the mat, Craig, did you notice that there's some pink um, diagonal lines? I didn't, but I do now. <laughs> you can see the pink ones. Okay. Yep. So these are our angles. So I'm not sure in paper crafting if you work with angles a lot, but we've got a 30 degree angle, a 45 degree and a 60 degree. Okay. And what we're interested in, the 60 degree line yep. that's going across there. So what you're going to do is roughly put your fabric on the mat so that it lines up with that 60 degree. So if I line it up so you can see mine so i've got a little bit protruding here got you and then the rest of this is l just lined up perfectly with that 60 degree line and if you wanted to make um 45 degree triangles so i'm going to make um the 61 here or diamonds you would do the same but on the 45 degree line See what you mean so as long as you've got all of some of your strip protruding here then you can bring your cutter back towards you and then just cut that off. Just follow up. Okay. By the way, Sonia is loving watching us doing this. Is she? Oh, yes, good, yes. good. So here we go. So I'm going to press and roll up. And then, there we go. Brilliant. That's it. And then what you're going to do is we're going to turn this around now. And now we're going to line it back up on the 60 degree line. But we also going to line up that straight edge that we've just cut on the four inch line again. Because we cut it at four inches. Okay. So we're going to move it down. And the thing is as well, you don't have to have the mat lined up with the cutter. As long as that cutter's underneath, um, the blade is going to touch that mat. We're just using that mat to protect our table as well. Okay. So we've got our 60 degree line here. And we've got this one on the four inch line. Okay, so if you did a five inch strip, you would do it on the five inch line, or a six and a half inch strip, you'd do it on the six and a half inch line. And then again, you're going to cut up, and then now we've actually made a diamond. Wow, well, there we go. Look at, oh. oh, look at that. Shining bright like a diamond. Brilliant. Can I just say, who says men can't take instructions? Come on, let's face it. Come on. I, I didn't say that. Look at it. No, but I bet you're thinking it. <laughs> Look at right. that. Wow. So now we're going to turn it into a hexagon. So now what you're going to do now is have it laid horizontally like that in front of you. Okay. And we're going to 
these are the two points here that we're interested in. Yeah. Okay? Uh -huh. So you're now going to put it under the cutter again. Okay. And line those two points up with the two inch line because we want a half the four. So whatever your measurement is. So if you move along and then two points that we looked at, line them up with the two inch line. Okay. Yeah, so I've got mine like that. Yeah, uh, I was right. Yeah, I actually thought we were finished a minute ago, Bernie. So the pressure is really on oh, me to make sorry. sure that I don't muck we this up. We're almost done. We're almost done. And then you're going to cut off that little triangle. There we are. Okay. Now I've done well at fussy so cutting I'm mine. I've actually back. cut out one of the hairs on the fabric. <laughs> and then you're going to turn it round and do exactly the same again. So okay. you're going to cut off the point on the other side. So again, line it up on those two inches. Like that. Okay, I said, or I never actually, I didn't know where that was going, other than you saying it was going to make a hexagon. I just yeah. didn't, I was like, how? So I've gone back down to the base and then I'm going to go up. Oh, look. Oh, I am well, well <laughs> chuffed with that one. Can I just say, my, my friend back home is more like a sister Laura. She's an incredible dressmaker. And that. She's going to be at home if she's watching. She's going to be like, check him out. Check out. So between Laura and yourself, Bernie, I don't know, I think I could maybe get, get into this. That's, it's good, isn't wow, it? And also, was... I've give, if you want to have a little bit play later, I've left you a pile of fabric, different types. So you've got felt, you've got faux leather, you've got cork, you've got wadding, and even your card as well. The only thing if you're going to do cut with your card, obviously it's like your fabric scissors and your paper scissors, keep them separate. And you, you can easily change the blade as well. You can get some spare blades for them as well. So, yeah, so that's our um, fabric brilliant. cutter and our mat that I'm going to be up with at one o'clock on the softer side. Oh, that is brilliant. Bernie, thank you so much. And I, I know I've not preempted you with what I'm going to ask you, but could we maybe do this again every now and again? If you're in on a Tuesday or that, maybe do some different soft craft bits every now and again. That would be so good. I would love to. And I'd love to teach you some extra plique after the horse that you did that your mum showed yesterday on the show that I thought was brilliant. There we so go. we can always do a little bit of plique next time, Joe. Brilliant. Um, Joe Craig, sorry, That's I'm okay. calling you Joe. That's because I'm up with Joe later on. Mm -hmm. Well, that is an absolute compliment to me. So oh, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bernie. I really, really appreciate that. And we'll see you later on on uh, the softer side. Right, so before we go on to the next bit, we're going to then just have a wee look and see what everyone is saying first. If you do want to see uh, Bernie again, just check her and Joe later on on softer side. Right, let's go back to where we were. So we have, so Tracy, thank you for uh, just uh, writing on our social media saying, I have made 12 Christmas cards already this year. So I'm with you, Craig. That is my absolute game this year, is to actually be making uh, cards, Christmas cards earlier this year. And then maybe more of my friends and family will get them. Uh, Sarah, lol, Craig, it's 8 p.m. Tuesday night. So, oh, for Australia, I got you. So, yeah, so it's 8 p.m. Oh, so it's not actually an exit. Well, it's still later on today, isn't it? It's still later on today. I don't want to know what happens between now and 8pm tonight. Uh, Claire was saying, oh, Craig, a strong cup of tea in the morning is the best way. Not exactly strong. I do like it a wee bit weak. Put it this way, my tea bag actually does me about three cups. That's how weak that I have. I know, I know, Erin. Jeezy peeps, you just about screamed in my ear there when you said that. Uh, Josie is saying, good morning, Craig. Looks uh, like some great offers coming up. Uh, great inspiration. Thank you so much. Uh, Judy saying, hi, Craig, here in Pennsylvania. How are you this morning? I am very well, thank you so much. I am very, very well. Uh, well do you know something, as you know as well, with myself and Joe yesterday, it was a long day, but do you know something, it was a fun day. It was fun. And let me tell you, I absolutely slept the best I ever did in a long time. Laura, you're saying, uh, still a sucker for a puppy pick, absolutely. And as well, when it comes to black labs, I love black labs. Now, we'll go on to, uh, I'm, well, I was going to say next guest. I'm going to say my friend, who is my next guest. We, of course, we kind of alluded to him yesterday, popping him on today's show. We've got Joe. Joe is right across here. I can see him. Uh, hey, Joe. Good, good morning, Craig. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for having me uh, on your show. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, uh, it's such a pleasure. There's like fancy graphics and, and all sorts of wonderful things. It looks like everyone's been having a lovely time. It looked like you were making something fabulous over there earlier. I know, I know. I've got it here. don't know what I can do with it. I'll maybe hold on to it and then maybe me and Bernie can do something with it, you know, over the weeks and months. That seems a, like a good idea. But now we know each other quite well now, but do you know the one thing I never actually asked you was 
how, how long have you been in shopping TV? You know, I've never ever actually asked you that. When did you make your it was uh, black you remember? And, when it was you made black your and video. white. It wasn't really black and white. <laughs> uh, it was. Um, it was the. I do know. I know the actual date as well. It was the 11th of November, 2010. Craig, uh, I remember, uh, was the first day. And I used to, of course, as some of our viewers will know, uh, and some won't, is I used to be a chef on Shopping TV. Ah, so uh, yes, how, I, know uh, that I got one. started. So mm -hmm. yes, yeah, so how, where are we now? 20. Where are we now? 2021. 20, 21. 20. So it will have. It will yeah. have been 10 years in November. Right. Okay. I so I was literally just. I was just a boy. Yeah, really, really, yeah, really tiny, yeah. really tiny. Because like, I'm much younger than I look, Craig. Uh, you know, people don't realise. I am only 30... How old am I? <laughs> 34 well, now. Yeah, so you're, I was 24 you're, when you're, I started in shopping TV, which is really young. That is really young. Mm. That is really young. Yeah, and it was obviously chef, and you know, because obviously yeah. you're a chef. And Do you uh, do, do you remember your first time? Do you remember your... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is your, your face there? I, I don't even know what you're... Well, do you not? I, well, I don't... I think I do. Um, so basically, first show I ever did, loads of you will know them, the halogen ovens were like, they were the thing, weren't they, Craig, sort of 10 years ago, everyone had one. Um, so it was a halogen oven show, and we basically used to, <laughs> we used to have this halogen oven on the end of the counter that went round, and it had table tennis balls, ping pong balls in it, and it went round and round and round, and it was to basically show the way that the air circulated. But there was this other second demonstration that you did where you have like a thermometer, and you like show how quickly it heats up. But the idea was, and the premise was, that you didn't do, you didn't have the balls going round and the heat on at the same time. And if okay. you did, when you did it, you, tur you basically had the balls going round, like a, like a sort of bingo call. Then you turned the heat on, did the demo with a the thermometer gun, but then you had to turn the heat back off again when you put the lid down, so you didn't cook your bingo balls. Uh, <laughs> but what happened was, as you can imagine, you can know how stressful it is the first time. You know what it's oh, like. Oh, you don't want to burn your, your bingo balls, no, no. So basically, my ping pong balls are going around like a sort of bingo caller. I've turned the heat on. Uh, I've put it on 250 degrees C. I've closed the lid. I've walked away. I'm at the other end of the counter. And all of a sudden, there was the most almighty... <laughs> and what had happened is my bingo balls had melted <laughs> they had been sucked up into the fan and the whole thing had exploded we had to evacuate the uh, we had to evacuate the kitchen the fire alarm started going off we had to go to an emergency break and get out and that was my first ever shopping tv experience and it's all been it's all been <laughs> well some might say downhill from there i don't know <laughs> no not at all do you know so i i did not know that did you not know i that? did and that is oh. not what i thought you were actually away to say because oh, okay. do you want to know what my favorite one is of yours oh okay there's a lot guys there, there's a lot there is a lot <laughs> yeah. so, actually mike do you know what actually I tell you what joe take a look at this there's your meringue oh no <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's the bit at the end. And the bit at the end that you don't see is me going, oh, there's a blooper. <laughs> How funny is that? That is my absolute yeah. favourite. But I actually thought you were going to say that, so that worked even better. That yeah, was so but good. But you know, the, the other video, thankfully, doesn't exist, the one with the, with the halogen oven. But you know, the other funniest thing about that show is that Dave Bradford is doing the show with, he had to go and present a satellite navigation for your car show after that. And the whole side of his head went rock hard like hairspray from all the meringue that was in there. Uh, can you imagine if it had been one of the other presenters maybe that worked there? So, oh, and there would have been other ones that maybe wouldn't have taken it in, in no. quite such jest. No, you know, anyone that's obviously at a shopping TV, I know said Dave Bradford would absolutely, you know, take that on, the, on his chin. But oh, that, see, that is, that's why it's my favourite one. Absolutely favourite <laughs> one. It is funny, isn't Brilliant it? Brilliant one. I was thinking about it, sat down over there, actually, and I was thinking, oh, I should have really mentioned it. No, you have done it, I, you I, done I your homework. Oh, I got there. I'm one step ahead of you. One step ahead of you. Oh, thank you so much for that. But the reason I obviously I wanted you on as well, because obviously it's the second show. So I wanted you and Ben as part of the first Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Um, but then you're on today as well, aren't you? Because you're yeah. on with Sarah later on. I am. Well, I've got Sarah tonight. We've got uh, Buddy Bag, brand new launch from the Buddy Bag uh, from Totally Tiffany. Boom. Boom. Uh, and uh, uh, totally Tiffany, even Tiffany even, is going to be joining us in the studio. She'll be videoing, videoing in. We've got a new bag for the 12 by 12 paper pads because, you know, we've become so mm -hmm. legendary for those 12 by 12 paper pads now. Uh, and you know how many people have got and love that rotating design board? Yes. There's actually a bag designed for your rotating design board to go into. 
which is awesome. So it's going to be two yeah. amazing products. And also, we've got loads of shows before then as well. I mean, I've got, we're up with Bernie a little uh, uh, earlier than that, 1 p.m. And then I'm guessing we'd, we, it is us together, isn't it? It is, yeah. It Perfect. is us, yeah. Craft vault. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm actually on both craft vaults today. Are you? Yeah, so double I craft vault. Double again. craft vault. We had an absolute blast. As you can see, I'm still here today, so I got away with the table. You got away with the table? Yesterday, <gasps> yeah. Oh, the yeah. table. We I, didn't talk enough about, I feel like we need to go back to the... Um, the 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 craft awards that we decided we were going to do absolutely last night. we didn't we didn't we decided last mm -hmm. night uh, producer Erin that we were going to start a a, Nash, uh, a yearly craft awards here at Craft TV uh, but we didn't really get talking about categories we, we were very well behaved in our last show last night I don't know what happened it was the only show of the day that we were well behaved in I think that was because if you actually seen the one before that which was Monday Makers <laughs> we were kind of just trying to you know make up for uh, how that one went yeah it in just a bit, rolling yeah, it back a bit yeah but no it was uh, it was something that we start to talk about and I think it's something we, yes. we absolutely seriously need to uh, to consider because that would be so good yeah it would be so good be so good and um, but yeah so later on we have got a launch party coming up but I know because I did ask you yesterday you will pop on again every now and again when you're in you try and stop me Craig brilliant although you do ask to be later on towards the end of the show. Always at the you? end. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I was expecting you about 9.55, to be honest. I mean, uh, I am here, is all I'll say. Uh, I was going to come in just in my hoodie. I was going to come on in my hoodie have. and without any makeup on. And I caught sight of myself in the mirror leaving the green room. And I thought, oh, oh Did you no. see the state of Ben yesterday? <laughs> He been fine. He was in the hoodie and everything. I guess so. But he's at. He was at. Hot. No, no one needs to see this, Craig. Not not this don't early in the morning. Hard, don't get too hard on yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So much for so much fun. I'm so going to be watching that video back and back and back. That's for sure. <laughs> But yeah, so you're going to be back at 4 p.m. with Sarah. 4 p.m. with yep. Sarah. Yes, I tell you what, I've got a bacon roll that is in the green room, so I'm going to I'm going to chip off and go and get you that if it. you want. All right, I'll see you at 11. See you at 11. Bye. Bye. Yes. Uh, so yeah, so coming up on uh, lunch party with uh, Sarah and Joe at 4 p.m. here in the UK, or of course you're going to have 11 a.m. or you're going to have 8 a.m. in uh, the US. We have got our embossing folders and stencils. These are absolutely fantastic. What these are is your embossing folder so we've got that legendariness when it comes to embossing folders when it comes to crafters companion you're getting six within the collection you get lovely roses beautiful lilies hummingbird you get floral butterfly you even get delicate dandelion and you get precious poppies I had to get Erin just to re say that one back to me because it didn't sound like poppies to me so within these ones here, these are your embossing folders that you can see. But as you can see on the screen, you get the stencils with them as well. So you can be using the embossing folders on their own or use the stencils on their own, but it's all about layering up. So here you can see the lovely roses. We're going to be showing you these just in a moment or two. So you're getting 18 elements in total, which is included in the folder as well as the stencils. So there is your rose. So your background is actually going to be uh, embossing. Actually, as well as the rose, you're going to come over the top with the stencils. You don't need to be precise because you're going to ink in between the stencils. Look at the beautiful lilies on that one there. Love the vibrancy of the colours, but of course you can use whichever colours you want. Look at that hummingbird. I think that blue look looks really, really nice. Very, very stripped back and uh, simple on that one there. Simple bit of embossing and it's just three colours that have been used on there or a fourth one if you want to include a wee bit more detail around the edges. Then we're going over to that uh, floral butterfly. Think about maybe other crafty products you've got at home. It could be any of your stencil paste, it could be any of your sparkles, anything like that. You can keep it as very, very simple or you can go all out and really go all extravagant. It's entirely up to yourself. We've got delicate dandelion, so let's go that way. Oh. Oh, I'm the right way. Gosh, that must be the first time ever. In case anyone, because I know there's quite a few people that's just tuning in for the first time. Everything, when it comes to camera, is back to front, left to right, upside down, the total other way. So if I want to go left, I have to go right. Just thought I would tell you that. That's why I always get them the wrong way round. There we go. We've got the uh, delicate dandelions here. One shade of uh, blue, or one blue, but you've got a few different shades in there. So that looks really, really nice. And then on this one, just here. Oh, see. 
Oh, I was getting too clever, too cocky there, wasn't I? You can see we've got precious poppies on that one here. So it's all about the foreground, it's all about the background. You're not missing any detail whatsoever between the embossing, between the inking. You are able to do that yourself. So as you can see, uh, a moment ago, you've got all of them. You've got actually all six of them included. Let's bring in my set as well. So if I bring these ones in, so I'm trying to decide. I really, really am partial to roses at the moment when it comes to crafting so I think we might actually use that one and then this is going to give you a bit of a good insight as to how they actually can be made so what we can do is if I bring out my folders and then I'm also going to bring out my stencil all come nicely packed together and just to say as well these are our 3d embossing folders so you're going to get multiple depth when it comes to the actual embossed image so if I bring a rose in here, so this is our folder, very similar to what I showed you to start with, with the Christmas cut and emboss, but there's no die cut parts, it's all embossed detail. So this is where you've got your multiple uh, bits of depth. I'll show you that once I do a bit of embossing. So I'm going to move that one out of the way. I think what I'm actually going to do first to start with, now when it comes to embossing, the absolute best way to show the uh, amount of detail when it comes to embossing is doing it on black card and doing gilding wax. That really enhances all of that uh, imagery. So that's exactly what I'm going to do to start with. And then what I'll do is we'll use another one where we actually use the inks as well. So what we can do, bringing in our plates, so because it is a 3D embossing folder, we need our base cutting plate, we need our magnetic shim, and then we need our top, pla uh, top plastic plate. And I'm going to set that one out of the way. I managed to actually say that one fine, just. Sandwiching that into the middle of our folder, you can cut it to size if you want, or you can trim it down after, that's up to yourself. And then we're going to run this one through. Now we still have some time, so get your comments and let me know what you are uh, up to either today if you are here in the UK or if you are stateside or across in Europe, let me know what you're going to be doing the rest of the day. Oh, thank you, oh, Katie. Katie's saying that I am totally worth the early wake-up call. I really appreciate 1.43. Do you know something? The only time I am up at that time of the morning when there's a WWE pay-per-view on the WWE Network, that's the only time I am up at that time. So, you know, I actually feel for you. But thank you so much for actually uh, staying up, either staying up or actually getting up to watch. It's so good to uh, have your company and all your interaction. I was looking at all the comments yesterday, so many that I just could not not respond but trust me I've read them all now straight away black it's very very hard to see all the depth even if I go close up to start with so you can see is it actually do you know something you get a bit of that light just hitting off onto the cardstock now let's bring in gildan wax this is our pebio gildan wax we've got all together five different colors check out the website for anything else that i am using that maybe we're not going over in the show everything's across on our website i'm just picking a bit up with my uh, finger and i'm going to dab a little bit of excess and i'm going to work my way around just going to go around all of these bits. Now what happens is you've got some of the petals of the roses that's even more in depth when it comes to the embossing. You've got the background detail here. It's a bit more subtle. It's not as uh, enhanced as much, but you've got a by, I would say if the top, of my, I'm saying the top of my head, I am counting maybe one, two, three. You've got about four, maybe even five different layers in here because you've got all of the, the actual leaves down at the bottom as well. You've got some foliage so I'll do that I'll leave that top bit and then I'm going to come down into the base here so I tell you what let's leave this base bit as it is let's go back up into the rose and let's really enhance that with the gold you could be using silver or any other ones that you've got at home alternatively do it on white cardstock and use your uh, ink pads and color them that way do exactly the same as I'm doing you might not want to use your finger, but you could use your blending tool. And I'm going to leave it as that. Gives you an idea of what it looks like, just plain black onto cardstock. Gives you an idea if you're really going to go heavy-handed with your uh, actual wax 
or even if you want to go a wee bit more subtle down into this bottom corner just here. So certainly when it comes to this rose, this is what it's going to look like throughout that full image into this one there. You've got the depth, you've got, as I say, maybe about four to five different levels of embossed detail when it comes to that one. So that is how our embossing folders, they work standalone, even in these ones here where you've got the stencils. As always, and I know I sound like a parrot always repeating myself, but you don't ever have to always use the folder and the stencils together. Use them completely separate if you want. So talking of that, what we will just do is let's bring in a bit of our white smooth cardstock for this one here. I'm going to just chop this down slightly. Now, do you know what I have done or not done? I have got my grasshopper water reactive and that's the only ink pad I forgot to bring with me. So we're going to have to do a bit of a nice a nice rose. Um, if we can, if anyone's got time, thank you Erin uh, for that one, uh, either Erin or Liam, they're going to find even just a red one, a red one for the rose. In the meantime, what we can do is if we bring in, have I got my embossing fold? Here we go. Bringing in just another bit of our cardstock here. As we've done when it comes to our uh, black cardstock, I'm just going to sandwich that within the middle of our folder. So exactly the same when it comes to the black. Base cut and plate. If you are using the large Gemini, then you're just going to use the same plate configuration, but it's going to be with your large plate. Or, of course, you can use your junior plates in with the large Gemini. Feeding that one all the way through. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our stencils in a moment. So this is then just going to come through. So straight away, when it comes to any embossing folders, have a look, see what you can uh, take away from that folder. And what I mean by that is you can absolutely use them on their own. So the white even, yeah, actually even the white on its own kind of shows it off really, really well. So that's pure white. Now, starting off this year and actually going into later on this year, white on white is really, really popular. It's on trend and it's something that's going to follow on through at least towards the end of the year. So what we're going to do, thank you, so we've even got Laura, she's in today as well, thank you Laura. We're uh, going to find it's going to be a trend of white on white, it's going to work throughout the full year. A little bit of matting and layering when it comes to your cardstock, still doing white, maybe in use our uh, Centura Peril you'll find on the website, works even well as well. Bringing in our stencils here. If you are familiar with our layering stencils, you know we did have some on the shows yesterday. Same kind of idea, but what we're going to do on this one here is this one's got a lot of uh, rose detail here. This one actually matches the stencil. Well, they both do, really. Uh, so you can see there, that's how it looks. So you've got a lot of uh, that aperture rose within there. If I bring this next one, see how there's a bit less detail? That's what's then going to give you your depth when it comes to your deep tone of colours. So if I move that one out the way to start with, and then if I bring this one back in, so your stencils actually match the image of your embossed detail. All that I'll do is I'm going to manoeuvre that into place so it's exactly bang on over the top of my embossed detail. So we can pop that one on. If you've got our uh, repositional adhesive sprays, you can be using that. That's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do now is if I lean over into my craft bag, my bag of goodies, I'm going to bring out a few blending tools as well. This is when uh, your blending tools are going to just come in absolutely perfectly. Whether it's going to be the square ones or the round ones makes no difference. It's always personal preference. Let's have a look. Have I got a red? This one will do, I think. There we go. We've got red. So what we can do, so let's bring in, we've got Chinese red and we've got a berry red, which is kind of round about the same, so we can go really light. This one we're going to use the Chinese red. And what I'm going to do is I'm really just going to pick out the actual rose head. All of the little, um, like the branches, the foliage, I'm going to keep clear and we can use some green for that in a moment. And I'm lightly just going to go over the top. I'm doing it lightly because uh, I want to go on a bit deeper with my next red. Alternatively, you can go really, really heavy-handed with this one and then come along with an even deeper red. It's entirely up to yourself. Maybe even something like a plum jam would work really well. So if I work my way round, and as I say, if you're using your uh, sprays, adhesive sprays, what that will do is that will hold it in place, but you can just uh, hold it down if you want. Don't get uh, overly worried or concerned. It's obviously just a bit of stenciling. It's along the lines of mixed media when you're going to incorporate any of your inks, maybe your pastes. I'm now going to 
pick up my grasshopper. And if anyone's wondering, it's our water reactive, water reactive ink pads that I'm uh, using with these ones here. So what's happening is because the stencil is sitting exactly over the top of the embossed image, you're basically coloring the embossed image. And it's such an easy way, but an effective way to actually create color. So if I remove that out of the way, look at that. And see how these areas where I've maybe overlapped that bit of green onto the rose, keep it. Do you know, nature's not perfect. You're going to find that when it comes to flowers or florals or foliage and leaves, it happens. So what I can do now is if I then bring in my last stencil here, because this has got a bit more less detail on it, this is where what you would do is pop it over the top again and you're just going to marry it up to your embossed area. And then what we can do is bring in, we'll use the same red, but what we're going to do is I'm going to go a bit more heavy handed within this one here. And then what that will do is that will really add a good accent to the rose head and it's going to really highlight the petals. We can work our way round and then we can just pick it out, take the top layer off and it'll look absolutely phenomenal. What I want to actually see, if many of you, the, recently the stencils all across the crafting board has been uh, taken like a bit of a resurgence. So if you're going to be creating anything with your stencils or that, always make sure any of our shows on Crafters TV, however, certainly, let's be honest, when it comes to my ones, always make sure that you're going to email your pictures in. Always good to see what you're making. Even if it's not just crafting, why not just uh, let me know what you're up to. Maybe a picture of your doggies or your cats or any of your animals. It would just be good to see, you know, how much I am a, a dog lover. So if you want to see a lot more uh, uh, kind of ideas, tuition, step by steps, tune in to Sarah and Joe, 4 p.m. here in the UK, 11 a.m. Eastern time, 8 a.m. Pacific time. You're going to see them for launch party. Now look at that. So even just using the exact same color, so exactly the same red, but what I done with that first layer, I went really, really light. And then that second layer, with that a little bit of detail on the stencil, we've gone more heavy handed. See how that just finishes it off perfectly. Add a bit of color onto the embossed backdrop if you want. That's entirely up to, your, up to yourself. It's not essential, but that option is there. No right and wrong way when it comes to anything crafty wise. You are able to just enjoy yourself, have a play and uh, see what you can come up with. That's not the only thing coming up on launch party as well, though. We have got this birthday box. Now, it was nicely here. What did it do? Here it is here. We've got it here right to the side. Now, within this one here, you have got a box full of unbelievably incredible goodies within these ones. Everything you already know when it comes to Crafter's Companion. You've got a nice selection. You may have seen what we had uh, in the box last, last week because I did showcase it on one of my Crafter's TV shows last week. I think it was myself and Ben. So I think we'll, we'll quickly dive in just so you can see. Because let's face it, if, if I didn't, you could still go back and watch one of the shows and watch it anyway. So let's do that one. So let's go all the way in here so that we can see. Now within these ones here, straight away, this is all about your sentiment dies. So these are going to die cut. These are good sizable ones, good sizable dies. You're actually getting 29% off on this one and it's 50 pounds worth of products when it comes to this box. You're getting the stamps to go with it. Now these stamps actually work in conjunction with your dies. So you can then maybe have like fabulous and then you can come and stamp you know, fabulous celebrations. It's up to yourself. You can have a bit of a play when it comes to what you are recreating card-wise. But you've got your stamps as well. You could be coloring in, do all your different uh, techniques that you maybe see from Color Me Happy with Leanne and Sarah. And then within these ones here, this is where you've got all of your consumables. You've got your gems. You've even got your little dew drops as well. You've got organza ribbon here. We're giving you all of these card blanks. We're also giving you the envelopes to go with them as well all comes included. Then what you're also getting is eight by eight sheets. You've got pattern papers here, all of these nicely designed with that. A lot of, a deep tone of pastels throughout. And then last but not least, we're even giving you eight by eight pure color tones that's going to work and com complement all the way out. So that is all coming up on launch party, 4 p.m. here in the UK, 11 a.m. Eastern time, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Just to say as well, you look after these, these are going to last you a lifetime so you can keep using your other crafty products. But that is 29% off you're getting within that one there. £50 worth of goodies. 
Now, something you've been asking me uh, quite a lot over the last, certainly this last week or so, coming up very soon, Thursday the 14th, we have got two, well it's 2 p.m. Eastern time, or it's going to be 11 a.m. Pacific time. If you are going to tune in, because I know here in the UK some of you are a bit savvy and you do watch, it's a HSN preview. First preview, first HSN show of the year. It's going to be Sarah, of course, and also we've got Ben this time. Ben's going to be on as well. He's going to be holding the fort. However, you've got me as well. Not only have you not got me, you have actually got me throughout the show as well. So what we're going to be then doing is we're then going to be using uh, some products that are coming up. We're also going to be here into, I'm trying to think what else. Have, do you know, so I'm saying I can't think what we've got coming up. I do know what we've got coming up. However, I think uh, I'm not going to say anything. Not going to say anything at all because I might actually get into trouble. So we'll just leave that there. But that is coming up on Thursday, the 14th, HSN preview with Sarah, with Ben, and with myself. Wow! What another quick hour. I can't believe that's the second show over and done with again. I have had, I have to be honest, it was a bit more calmer today. I was a bit more relaxed. I enjoyed it even more, although I did enjoy it yesterday. Now I know what to expect. It was so, so much fun. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. I'm going to be back at the exact same time tomorrow, 9 a.m. here in the UK. If you are going to be up in uh, Eastern Time in the uh, United States, it's going to be 4 a.m., or 1 a.m. Pacific time. I know many of you will not actually have gone to bed because uh, you're still crafting at that time of the night, which I do sometimes. But until then, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>